Uh-huh. Mr. H? Mm-hmm. How's the cat doing? Did he catch the mouse? What cat? The one I left here last night. Mrs. Hollister ordered it. That was a cat? I thought it was Paula Stowe. <laughs> Where are you going? I hung it in the closet. <laughs> Morning, Donald. If I know old Donald, he's caught that mouse. But we won't know until uh, 7.29 tonight. Really? I know this sounds like a ridiculous question, 8.12 in the morning, Andrew. But why won't we know until 7.29 tonight? Dick, I know it sounds weird, but nobody has ever seen that mouse except at 7.29 at night. On the nose. Sort of makes you wonder what he does the rest of the time. Mm. Maybe he winds himself up. <laughs> Do me a favor, take the cat out of here and call our dear landlord and tell him to get an exterminator up here. Mr. North is not gonna go for that. In the first place, an exterminator costs $15. Andrew, with Oscar, you don't have to go to the second place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chief, all right, all right. Do whatever you have to do with the cat. All righty, now you keep the cat until he gets the mouse. In the meantime, I'll call Rent-A-Cat. Hold it, huh? Hold it. <laughs> Rent-A-Cat? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why would anyone want to rent a cat? Because it's tax deductible. <laughs> if only Oscar could find a place like that. Larry? Did you drop this? A, no, no, that's not mine. <clears throat> Vichy Soise, filet of Dover sole, potatoes au gratin, crepe Suzette. Ah, that's our menu. No kidding, some breakfast. <laughs> Larry, you ought to drop around more often. Yes. Are we entertaining tonight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who are we entertaining tonight? We're entertaining the Vegas Muela. Larry, uh, did you catch that name? Yeah, Dick, she said the Gapazic Bagas. <laughs> That's what I thought she said. Paula, Paula, I notice as a general rule that when you mumble, you're trying to conceal something from me. Isn't that correct? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now then, who are the Gazungamungas? The Gazungamungas are Mr. and Mrs. Nugent. Mr. and Mrs. Nugent? Your boss, Dick, your boss. I know, I know who it is. <laughs> Why are they coming tonight? I thought I'd just go ahead and ask them, because you always try to talk me out of having them over here. After that last dinner party we had with them, which was a complete farce, I decided this time I'd be all prepared. So I've hired a man to ten bar. I've asked Oscar over, because Mrs. Nugent just loves him to death. And anyway, my cooking's improved. Oh, honey, honey, now, you didn't have to go to all that trouble. I know, but it's beginning to be embarrassing, because so many of the wives have had the Nugents over at least once a year. We've had them over once in four years. And that once didn't go too well. Oh, that was all right. Most of that is just in your mind, that's all. Why? What happened? I <laughs> uh, guess what? We've been married about eight months? Yes, yes. Yes, and I wasn't your top cook, but <laughs> I decided that I would ask Dick's boss over because it'd be a good idea for him. Well, I can understand that. My sister-in-law is always making dinner for my brother's bosses. Week after week, another boss. Every week a different boss? Every week another job. She's a lousy cook. <laughs> No, no, Harry, this has nothing to do with the cooking. See, we didn't know the Nugents were going to come in separate cars. Separate cars? Yeah, that's right. Nugent arrived here first. And then after about a half hour, he began to get worried. Where was Mrs. Nugent? So he went downstairs to look for her, and she ran over him. <laughs> <laughs> now, fortunately, he wasn't hurt. He's just a little shaken up, that's all. What a way to start an evening. You haven't heard the bad part. Mm. <laughs> Naturally, naturally, they were both a little on edge because of the accident, so Mr. Nugent asked Paula for a little brandy. Yes, and I cooked the duck and all the brandy that I had. Yeah. You never guess what she served him. Why? Duck on the rocks. <laughs> well, I can see that all this is embarrassing, but it's certainly not critical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It got very critical during dinner. That's when Nugent really blew his top. We sat down to dinner. The first course was lobster. Paula, in her nervousness, forgot to boil the lobsters. <laughs> That, that, that's critical. Especially when your lobster starts to fight you for your fork. <laughs> so he got sore about the lobster, huh? No, no, he got sore about dessert. You know, I decided to serve him Cherry's Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And so when I started the flame and got it going, I sneezed. <laughs> and he blew his top because you sneezed? No, no, no. He blew his eyebrows because <laughs> I sneezed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Flame leapt right across the table. Whoosh. Came right off. Nothing left. Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure tonight will go just fine. Thanks for the breakfast, honey. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Bye -bye, you Dick. Over. Well, I gotta go too, honey. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. What time did you say the Nugents were coming? 8.15. 8.15? 8.15? Isn't that a little late for a weekday night? Yes, but the mouse comes out at 7.29, and I don't want to introduce him to Mr. Nugent tonight. I see. All right. See you tonight. I'll see you at 7.25. Yeah, don't be late. No, I won't be late. I want to see the cat catch the 7.29 mouse. <laughs> And take what? the pussycat over to the fire station tonight. Uh-huh. You thought you were a dinner guest, didn't you? You got into my fish course. I'll be glad to take him over. Yeah. Hey, did he, uh, did he catch the mouse? Oh, now that you mention it, I haven't even seen the mouse tonight. Gee, I hope nothing's happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> fish course. Donald. Donald Cat. Who doesn't remember Cat that? Well, that was the bartender. You can't make it tonight. Oh, things are starting to go wrong. Hold it, hold it. That's only one thing. The bartender can't make it. No, no, the... Uh, right, right. You're so right. <laughs> only one thing. Good, yeah, good. It's no problem, no problem. All ten bar. Let's see, we're just fine here. Vodka, brandy, bourbon. We don't have any of those. <laughs> all right, all right, no problem. Just push the scotch tonight, that's all. Listen, I think we still have some time. Why don't I call up the liquor honey, store? Honey, hot now. Ah, relax, just relax. Relax. Come here, sit down. Sit down here. Okay. I want you to do what I do when I have to relax, whenever I have to speak in front of a group or get in front of a meeting or anything oh, yeah, like you that. Get nervous? Well, sometimes, sometimes. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Take a deep breath. Come on. <coughs> deep breath. Deep breath. All right, take a deep breath. Good. Let it out slowly. Very good. Very good. Now let your whole body go limp. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. Now, move your head around. Big circles. Come on. We'll do it together. Move your head around. Big circles. Round and round. Mm. And round. Nice and easy. Nice and light. And loose. And relax. Good. That's it. That's it. Oh, here they are, honey. Paula. Paula, they're here, honey. Sweetheart, sweetheart, the Nugents are here. Wake up. Tense up, tense up, honey. What? Come on, come on, they're here. <laughs> you, that was a clear case. You knew I had my eye on the parking space. You deliberately... You de oh, well, yeah, good evening. Richard, uh, hello. Richard and Paula. So good to see you. You know my wife and Norma. Yes, yes of course. Yes. Nice to see you. We didn't know it was formal. What? Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, it isn't. It isn't horrible. <laughs> no, uh, you, you see, we just got back from uh, an engagement wedding. party. Uh, a, a wedding. Engagement party. <laughs> no. Well, let me have your coat, Mrs. Nugent. Oh, please, you must call me Norma. All right. <laughs> I just love these old apartments with high ceilings and wood beams. <laughs> and steps and things. <laughs> Mrs. Nugent. Oh, please call me Norma. Are you all right, Norma? No. It's all right. It's just an old ski injury. Oh. Do you ski? No. I fell down the stairs at the lodge. You'll, uh, you'll have to get used to Mrs. Nugent's sense of humor. I managed to. Do you mind if we move this pillow? Oh, I'm so sorry. Your bite should have been at the end. Uh, uh, can I get you something to drink, Mr. and Mrs. Nugent? Now, please. It's Norma and Norman. Okay, fine, fine. Norman? Yes? <laughs> no, no. I was speaking to Norman, Miss, Mrs. Nugent. Norma. <laughs> Well, look, we run into this trouble all the time. Why don't you just do what all of our friends do and call us by our nicknames? Uh, Norma, that is not... Bunny a... and Bobo. <laughs> Bunny and Bobo. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? Sweet. Well, how did you ever get a name like that, Bunny? I'm Bobo. <laughs> Well, 
Well, well, why don't I, uh, why don't I fix everyone a drink, huh? <laughs> Where can I get you, Mr. Bunny? <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobo. No, Bobo. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hollister, so please, just fix me a scotch and soda. That'll do fine. Nothing for me, thank you. A little something light. Okay. <laughs> 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 on the well, way... Hello, on the way... <laughs> You go ahead, Mr. Nugent. What were you saying? No, it wasn't very important. You go ahead, boy. I, I was saying that I noticed that you all arrived together. Do you come in the same car now? <laughs> oh, no. No, we still go our separate ways together. <laughs> no, I don't think I meant that quite. <laughs> so, won't you have an hors d'oeuvre? Uh, no, probably not. Uh... <laughs> I don't believe it. It's been four years since you two have been to our house, and finally you're here. <laughs> four years? Yes, about, uh, about four years. <laughs> Dick? Yes, Did yes. you hear that? It's been about four years since the Nugents have been to our house. Oh, really? Really? Oh, thank you. My goodness. Four years. Yeah. <laughs> four years. <laughs> four wonderful years. <laughs> Uh, so, well, here's to, um, cheers. <laughs> yes? Huh? Ah, uh, so, how did you get the name Bunny? <laughs> well, that's a long, boring story. Tell us. May I use your powder room? Oh, please, right, right. Can I use the... your phone, Hollister? Yes, surely. Where is that? Oh, that's right through the, into the oh, bedroom. Oh, yes. I wonder what time it is now in Hong Kong. <laughs> Come here. Yes? Things are going badly. Badly. This thing is going to turn out to be another fiasco. Darling, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm sure they'll never leave here. We're, we're never going to be able to get rid of them. The only good thing that's happened is that the mouse hasn't shown up. I'll get their coats. I won't want their cars. <laughs> oh, boy. I just love your laugh, Oscar. Want to hear it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love your show. You're not alone. <laughs> In my house, I am. <laughs> There's someone at your window. <laughs> oh, that's Harry, our fireman. He lives next door. Your fireman? You're not serving Cherry's Jubilee again, are you? Dick. <laughs> Wait, excuse me just a second, folks. Excuse me, please. Dick. Uh, what is it? Could I, could I speak to you privately for a minute, Dick? Well, Harry, I have dinner guests. You can see that. This is important. Uh, you all know Harry's our card also, fireman. Harry, this is Mr. and Mrs. Nugent. How do you do? Uh, won't, won't keep him a moment, folks. Uh, sorry to interrupt the dinner and everything. Come on in the bedroom. Yeah. All right, all right. Now, what's so important? You had to take me away from dinner. Dick, the cat's sick. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> and uh, thank you for telling me, Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Dick! The cat is sick. Well, I'd be sick, too, if I ate a mouse, Harry. <laughs> the cat didn't eat the mouse. The cat ate the fish. It's a jungle out there, Harry. You know that. <laughs> dog eat dog, cat eat fish. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't Paula tell you that cat ate part of the fish that you're serving for dinner? No, she didn't tell me. My goodness, she is handling this dinner party well. <laughs> you're not listening, Dick. You're not listening. Fat Eddie's on his way to the vet with a stiff cat. That cat was in your apartment all day, Dick. He ate nothing but the fish you're serving for dinner. That fish is poisoned. What? I better get out there before those people are poisoned. All of this fish is delicious. <laughs> They're poisoned. Hello, doctor. I haven't told anybody yet. 
We're not even sure the fish is poisoned. Dr. Krillman, the only reason I'm calling you is I really don't know who else to call. Is there any way I can tell if there's something wrong with the fish? I can't do that. I can't go out there while people are eating and smell their dinner. <laughs> all right, all right. What will the fish smell like if there's something wrong with it? Carbon disulfide. <laughs> Dr. Kilman, what does carbon disulfide smell like? Bad fish. I see. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Hold on a second. Hold on. Don't go away. <laughs> oh, here I am. Here I am, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry for the delay. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, sweetheart, you didn't give yourself enough peas. Oh, no, that's all no, right. No, honey, you've got to have some more peas, sweetheart. Mmm. <laughs> Hey, there you are, sweetheart. Peas are good for you, huh? And Bobo, Bobo, you want some more peas, don't you? <laughs> Everyone, peas are good for you. Vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. And Bunny, some more peas for you? No, I have enough peas. Oh, oh I think you should have some more peas. Well, I wouldn't care for any more peas. Give me a plate. <laughs> well, if, if it means that much to you. <laughs> You think I need more peas? You don't need any more peas. <laughs> Excuse me, be right back. He sure is pushing those peas tonight. <clears throat> Dr. Krillman. Yes, Dr. Krillman, I smelled everybody's dinner. Uh, it seems all right to me. Mm -hmm. A little fishy, but all right. I guess we can rule out carbon disulfide poisoning, uh-huh. Salmonella? <laughs> what salmonella? Poison fish that doesn't smell. <laughs> okay, Doc, you want to get over here right away, please? Come on, hurry up, right. I don't know what you're doing, but we've got dinner guests out there. Paula, you'll... You'll have to go on without me. I'm not having dinner. Why not? Well, you see, Dr. Krillman is on his way over, and someone has to be alive to answer the door. <laughs> Sorry, we're just going to have to go out there and tell them. Oh, how are we going to go out there and tell those people that we may have poisoned them? Maybe I can work it into the conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, that's no good, that's no good. We gotta tell Oscar first. If he panics, he'll panic everybody else. <sighs> you keep the Nugent occupied while I tell Oscar. Uh, Oscar, Oscar, may I see you for just a second, please? Uh, Dr. Kuhlman said not to worry. Very probably the fish is not poisoned at all. Right. What's up, Dick? <laughs> uh, Oscar, uh, I've, I've got some news for you. Good news or bad? Bad. Could it wait till after dessert? Uh, Oscar, I have something to tell you, and it's a little shocking, and I don't want you to panic. Are you kidding? What, me? Oh, oh, come on. I know, I know. You remember the old days. Yeah. Look at what's happened. A new change? Mm -hmm. Remember a couple of weeks ago we were on the plane, they said the motor's conked out. Remember me? No nerves? Cucumber, cucumber, Dick. Right, right. Well, I just don't want you to panic, that's all, because, you know, sometimes you do when you get upset. And uh, I know, but just tear that thought right from your mind, Dick. Oh, okay, Trust good, me. Good, thank you, Oscar. Uh, there's a very good possibility that the fish that we're eating at dinner tonight is poisoned. <laughs> Poison, huh? <laughs> please, please, don't panic. Dr. Krillman is on his way over here. I don't want you to panic because I don't want to get the Nugent unduly excited. Dick, Dick, you're dead right by calling me and telling me first. Because you know NN, panic time, the old panic button right here. <laughs> Not me, Dick. Trust me, leave it up to me. Good, good. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Remember, Oscar, Oscar, you promised me, no Dick, panic. Dick, look in these eyes. Trust me. Okay. I'll tell them. All right. Uh, folks, uh, Dick and I had a little chat, and uh, it seems as though something has happened tonight, and, well, we both feel that you should know. Folks, <laughs> folks, we, uh, we've been poisoned! I got out of the hospital! <laughs> He promised me. He promised me. 
folks, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nugent, uh, it seems there was the, uh, the cat and the, uh, the mouse. Uh, actually, there's a, there was only a slight possibility. The doctor is on his way over here, but there is just a slight possibility that we have been poisoned. Poisoned? <laughs> Did we say grace before dinner? <laughs> Nugent, being of sound mind. <laughs> where, where is the doctor? Where is he? Hey, folks. Hey, you want to hear something funny? Yes, but don't expect any laughs. <laughs> that Eddie just called from the vet. There was nothing wrong with the fish. The cat's all right. The cat's all right? Yeah, not only that, you get your pick of the litter. Your cat had kittens. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm an uncle. I'm an uncle. <laughs> Well, I, I'm just so relieved for all of us. I'm sorry if it's been an unpleasant evening for you. You didn't even get to finish your dinner, did you? I tell you what, you know what I could do? I could go in and whip up a tuna salad. Anybody got any change? They won't break a big bill on the bus. <laughs> tomorrow morning at 11 for more laughs on the USA Comedy Hour. Now stay tuned as Pam Greer and Yafet Koto match wits in the action-packed crime thriller Friday Foster on the USA Movie, next.